Hello everyone, welcome to my channel if you've never been here before and welcome back if you have. It's Sherry from Sherry's Painting. Today we're going to be painting Great Blue Heron. So I am using an 8x10 canvas and a half inch flat bristle brush to apply this base coat. Um, and I'm switching between black and burnt umber and you know pick up black one time and then burnt umber the other time um, and continue to use the up and down stroke like what I'm doing here um, as I'm shooting the video because we're going to be painting grasses in there in the next step so so make sure your whole canvas is covered and you can use a hair dryer to dry it or let it dry on its own if you want and we will see you in the next step. Hello, welcome back. So for this step, we're going to be making grasses and things, okay? I am using, I'm still using my half inch flat brush. Um, I'm also using hunter green, I'm using lime green, and um, also I will be using a little bit of brown. So just for your information, I did get the photo uh, as a reference photo off of Pixabay. It is a royalty free site. So if you'd like to go there and you can just type in Blue Heron and you can find this picture and download it just so you can use it for reference. That is totally cool. Um, but I am just using these uh, three colors that I was talking about, the brown, the lime green and the hunter green. And I do use a bit of yellow as well, but I just want you to make these strokes any which way uh, you feel comfortable with it. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect and some of them are gonna be lighter, some of them will be darker, some of them will be faded and some of them will be sharper. But I don't want any hard lines in here. And what I mean by that is to use a whole bunch of paint and then end up having a ridge of paint on it that you can't get rid of. So if you're using a lot of paint, just make sure that you're blending it because we want that nice smooth edge for when we draw on our, um, our hair. And so I am gonna go in here um, with a bit of lighter areas as well. And you know, you can have longer ones, shorter ones, you can have them going left, you can have them going right. You can basically do whatever you want um, in here. Whatever composition you can come up with is fine. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. And you know, sometimes you guys would do even better than I would on this step. So, um, so just whatever you're comfortable with. And then um, I will see you back here for the next step. So for this step, we're going to be locating where our heron is. So I go about a third of the way down the canvas and I make a, a sort of a semicircle and then make it a little bigger. And then you make an S for the neck basically is all you're doing. And then a triangle at the top of the S, go back in, go out, and then you're gonna end up about an inch from the bottom of the canvas. You're gonna go um, make a little wing in there, but don't worry about that right now. We're also gonna locate the eye and the beak, okay? We're just gonna draw a line from the bottom of the eye to the beak. And then I'm just gonna extend that chest out a little bit. So if you can make an S, you can make a heron. I'll see you on the next step. So here now we're going to, for this step, we're going to underpaint the heron. So I'm using blue and black uh, mixed together to make a very dark blue color. Going to the top of his head there, he has dark blue there as well as down the front of his neck um, and all the way down the side of his body there. And in the shot, you don't get a picture of his legs, so you guys don't have to worry about his legs. Um, also, there is a spot on his shoulder with a dark blue mix as well, so we will put that in. Um, and and then we're gonna, I'm going to go in with the white, and um, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that mixture, 
and we're going to start filling out the rest of the bird. Make sure you um, wash off your brush before you do that. And then just add a little bit of white to that mixture, the blue-black mixture. And then we're going to fill in um, around the, the back of the shoulder and also, or the back of the bird. And I feel like I probably didn't make it quite dark enough. So I go back in there and darken it up just a little bit more. And you'll be filling in the bird with the rest of this color all the way up to his beak um, and just the back side of his eye. So all the way down the shoulder, around the neck and up to the front. And then once, and I'm using a, um, a filbert brush for this because I'm really comfortable with that brush and you can get it to go flat if you want. So I really like that brush. Um, and you can use whatever brush you're comfortable with. So I'm going all the way up and into his head there and um, just as far as, almost as far as the eye and then just a little bit at the top of the head too because we need light to show dark and dark to show light. And the top of his head is light, but there is that blue patch in there that we still need that dark blue patch. In a second here, I am going to mix yellow ochre and orange together to um, do his beak. Um, and that light blue color, you wanna carry it right through on the bottom, on the base of his beak because there is, um, his beak is quite large. It's bigger than his head and um, for all that fishing. And, um, but we can mix the yellow ochre, ochre and the orange together. And we're just gonna fill that beak out um, with that color uh, for the time being. And you want that color to come right up to his eye. I'm having trouble getting my paints open. That's what's taking so long. So um, we'll just have to give me a sec here. And then um, the paint was stuck, so I had to fix that too. But here we go. So um, just right to his eye and then to his beak and to a point. Don't worry about um, it too much at this point. We will be fixing this part up because it looks kind of funny right now. But that's okay. It'll look fantastic when it's done. So I will see you all on the next step. So in this step, we're gonna um, add another layer to his head, but I'm also doing his eye. So with the small round brush, um, I have um, put in a little bit of straight uh, yellow ochre around the, um, around the eye. I did draw a circle in the middle with the chalk that where we're going to put the pupil of his eye. These birds have far, fairly large eyes and fairly big pupils. So um, I'm just going over it now around the outside edge with black. And then I'm going to add a little more black into the center. Then I'm rinsing my brush, cleaning it and going into that yellow and adding a little bit of white just to make it a little bit lighter on the on the back side of the eye and again another little layer there just on the back side of the eye to make it a little bit brighter and then i am going to go directly um, or with the black and make the pupil a little bit bigger and then i'm going directly into the white and i'm making two little sparkles in his eye there. Next, I'm gonna go into that yellow again, and I'm just gonna um, highlight the bottom of the beak a little bit, as well as the top of the beak, just above our line that we made with the chalk. <clears throat> and I'm just adding a little bit more, cause he's got fur around the outer edge of his beak, but I'm just making his beak a little bit more distinguished. And then I'm going in with a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of black, mixing it together, and then a little bit more white. And I'm going to go along the top of his head just to add um, those few feathers that are at the top of the head. And again, we will be going through this again and putting on another layer. But for now, I just wanted to um, do the top of his head here and around the eye area just to make it a little bit more pronounced. 
and along the top of the beak because he actually has quite a bit of white along the top of his beak. So we'll just add that layer in there as well. Again, around the eye area, I'm doing the feathers now um, in the front here. And you just want a sort of a, um, arcing motion on your stroke, a straight stroke, but an arcing motion. And again, we'll be doing another layer on this bird because um, the more layers you have, then the more realistic it becomes. So just make your stroke going outward. Okay, and I'm putting that white underneath the beak and coming out um, at the chin area there. We're gonna leave him a little darker under the, the chin because that's where the shadow's gonna hit. So I've changed the shape of his head just a little bit. And um, now I'm going in to do the feathers toward the outside of his head there. And they are going to overlap a little bit. And again, just be aware of, of the direction of the stroke for this bird. Just going to put a little bit more highlight around his eye area just to make it look like it's in the socket. And then I'm going to go in with the white and we will be blending that as well later. They also have feathers underneath their beak. So I put those in as well. And again, this is just the first layer. And then I'm going to go in with the um, black with my script liner brush. And I'm just going to make, um, you're going to start underneath the eye and just to below the eye. And then you're just going to extend your, your stroke out because they do have, you know, a split in the beak. And again, we will be painting um, that again as well. This is just the highlighting colors. And around the eye area, I'm just making a little triangle. Just once again, a little shadow to make it stand out a little bit more there. I'm rinsing off my brush again. And I'm gonna go into the white, straight white here with my round brush again. And I'm just gonna try and make those feathers a little more prominent at the top. And like I said, we will be going in with that white highlight. Um, at some point, just making it a little wider around the beak area so that it fits a little bit better. And now I'm go it looks like I'm going to go in um, and do around the chest there. So the feathers um, that are on top of that dark blue um, are quite light. So I'm just gonna go in um, and start doing those a little bit as well. Just a little hint of, um, of feathers there. And again, this is just the first. Don't cover up all your dark there, okay? Or you'll end up adding it back in. So don't cover all your dark there. And again, I'm just going in, adding a little more white to the beak at the top there and toward a little shadow at the bottom to so that white and I'm just extending the beak out a little bit to match our line and then we will be erasing those marks as well at some point here Again, I'm going to go into the feathers again here. Just add a little more white there. I'm using straight white this time because this is almost like the highlight for the head there. And then I'm going to go back in here, add a little more white to this. But I want to make sure that some of that blue is still showing through there. And then we will be carrying on to um, the next step as well. So I'm also high, giving a little bit of white uh, feathers at the tuft there of the wing, and then we will be carrying on to the next step.
So in this step, we're, I'm, I've mixed a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of white on the filbert brush. And we're just going to um, go in and do the, um, the feathers um, at the uh, base of his, um, underneath the chin there, I guess you could call it. And I'm just giving it some light strokes here. Make sure the strokes are going in the direction um, that his feathers would be going in. So um, I, I'm using sort of just little comma strokes here and um, just to give it uh, the look of the direction that the feathers would be going in. And I'm going right up to his back portion there as well. So, um, and then I'm trying to leave a little bit of shadow uh, underneath and um, underneath the neck. And this is just another layer that we are applying to this bird here. So just watch the direction of the feathers. They kind of spin around there and go right up to the back. And so now I'm rinsing the brush and I'm going into a little bit of, of white and I'm just going to highlight the back of his head, add a few more feathers there. And um, just to give that just a little more highlight on those feathers. And I'll probably go in with a wash after just to calm some of them down a little bit. But I will show you how to do that as well. Because I don't want it to look too white. I also extend the white onto the beak a little bit just because he does have quite a bit of white on top of his beak, at least in this photograph he does. Um, and then also on the bottom, I'm highlighting some of those feathers on the bottom. There's also white at the end of the beak. I didn't want to go too far doing this quite yet because um, I, I want to erase those chalk marks here soon in the next step. So here I'm going in, I'm just adding a bit more highlight in here. Um, leave the shadow at the front or the dark at the front if you can. And you want to leave a little bit of dark in between as well. I just feel like he's a little bit too light at the top there. But anyway, so I'm going in now with my liner brush and I'm just making some um, highlighted feathers at the back of his neck careful to leave some dark spots still. Again, I feel like it's too white. Um, even I make mistakes, so we will be going in with a wash after. I don't claim to be perfect. Um, so, you know, I hope you guys know that everybody makes mistakes. So um, it, it just takes a while to figure out what you're doing. So here I'm just paying attention to where I'm putting those strokes, mixing the brown and the white together and carrying it up into that chest area as well. And then going back toward the neck and it really does go around the neck, but I'm trying to do a few individual uh, feathers here and we will be going back to highlight those as well, but just the brown and the white mixture is what I'm using here. And all the way around his neck and all the way up to the to the hump of his back there. If that's what you call it. And just careful of the direction of the stroke. Just sort of use comma strokes, I guess is what I would call them because they kind of look like commas, but, and just follow those strokes or that direction. And all the way up. And at the base as well. And then I'm gonna switch to my filbert brush here and I'm going to mix the brown and the white, or sorry, the black, the blue, and the white again. And I'm going to get my filbert brush to a chiseled edge. I am using a bit of water here, sopping it up, but then also pouring it out. And then we're going into the bigger feathers at the back here. 
you want to use kind of a comma stroke here too and you want to go in the direction of that um, wing feather or the wing okay all the way to the bottom of the bird and then along the neck as well and here up and in, into the um, white area there the tip of the wing and then I'm going to go into the black and blue and I'm just going to add a few shadows so I feel like I kind of painted over them a little bit going to add a few more shadows at the front also at his neck and under the chin just to make it look a little more realistic and we will see you on the next step So for this step, we're going to be finishing up those um, his back a little bit and adding a few highlights and a few lowlights. So I'm starting with a mixture of the gray, black, blue, white, just a little bit lighter this time. And I'm um, just going in and sort of going with the flow of the back, um, his back and the arch of his back. Um, and, you know, just adding a few extra little uh, highlights here and there it's it's not the final highlight but it's a little bit lighter than what we've put on there thus far i'm also going to go toward the bottom and do this as well and around the neck um, and um, also just adding in a little bit of um, of um, little marks by the wing there as well and um, just just final little touches of this fella and um, around the back area as well and into the neck and it's the same mixture of the blue the white and the black um, and definitely on the lighter side as well and then I'm making these little shell shapes because um, on their wing back there they do it sort of looks like that with the feathers um, they kind of just have this um well they have a feathery look to them because they're feathers um but <laughs> so i'm just doing that and adding a few extra little uh, pieces that might be coming out um, of the the wing there and also at the bottom and again at the top so just you know working wherever you want and i'm using the script liner brush for this so use a small brush or a script liner brush or whatever brush you're comfortable with but I want some of the hairs to look quite fine so um, and then I am going into the white again and I am going to actually add in a little bit of highlight on the nose there and on the top of the head so just to make it give it that little sparkle and the end of the end of the beak um, or I guess I called it a nose, but, and little fine hairs just below the beak. And again, just a little high, a couple of little highlights in there just to give it a little oomph. And again, around the eye a little bit to pop that out and at the bottom, but we want to keep the underneath there quite shadowed. So, um, and then again, here at the wing, um, just adding a little bit of yellow in there because I felt like it needed a, a little touch of yellow there as well. So again, um, just adding those little lines and little details here and there. And you can certainly pause the video at any time just to give it any more work that you feel that it might need. So a little bit of highlight at the front there where his feathers are, the front. <clears throat> to make that pop out a little bit more and toward the base as well and toward the back of the head as well there we go and again uh, around the eye there just to give that a little bit more and also down I'm just dotting the beak lightly in some spots just to give it a little extra shadow there and then toward the end as well <clears throat> And, and then I'm going to go in with the black and do the same thing, 
put a few low lights here and there just to make the highlights sparkle a little bit more. Not very many on here though. I'm just, you know, using a few little dabs here and there around the back area as well as around the front. And it's just, it's just another added layer of, um, of feathers there. So, and again, around the front, I'm just putting a little shadow in there as well. And just around the front, a few here and there, but nothing too serious. Just to let those highlights stand out a bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm pouring to the greens. And we're going to add some grasses to the bottom here. Just so we can um, make it look like there is something in the front of him. So I'm just going to add a few grasses to the bottom. And I'm using... Um, light green dark green and a little bit of yellow as well and my small round brush <clears throat> and i'm just sporadically putting pieces here and there i want this to these ones to really glow though they're not like the back ones where they're fuzzed out like in a camera so i put one that comes right up over his um uh to the base of his um wing there as well and just highlight it as best you can with the yellow or the green or whatever you feel you can put in as many of these as you like i i just like doing these because they're they're fun and it just makes it um it, it just sets everything down so i quite enjoy doing this part so just greens a few little greens here and there i was going to put some in the back but then i thought i'd put them up um, right in front of his beak there a little bit and toward the bottom as well and then a couple to the side and you can add like I said I might even go after um, go into this painting a little later and, and highlight some of the ones in the back but I kind of like it the way it is with the fuzzed out background so again I'm going to go in with my script liner brush and the last stage is to sign your name I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for subscribing and please do hit like and subscribe. Bye.